so this is a problem that we did about somebody running past my house. And uh, we knew some of the variables. We knew that uh, the friend jogs past my house. See, that's kind of very thick. Let's see if we can make that a little bit thinner. Yes, there we go. Um, so a friend jogs past my house with some v friend final velocity of 2 meters per second and an initial velocity of 3 meters per second. And we know that my initial velocity is from rest, so that's zero. Um, and we're asked for what my final velocity is. What we do know is that my acceleration is equal to 1 meters per second squared. So these are problems where somebody's catching somebody else. And the key idea here is that they have a time and a place in common. And so if the final time is when the catch is, that means that at that time, x final for me is equal to x for my friend. That's the idea. OK, so we share that time and we share that place. In fact, we can, in a minute here, make a graph of position and time. We both start out at my house, so x naught for me is 0, and x naught for my friend is 0. And at some time later, we are both meeting together again when I catch up with my friend. So, you know, how I do these problems is I just start writing kinematic equations. And so one way to do this problem would be to write down that x for my friend is x naught for my friend plus v naught for my friend times time plus their acceleration t squared. And the same is true for me. And we both start at 0, and my initial velocity is 0. But I also remember that these two things are equal. So I'm basically using the constraint equation here that says these are not just any two people running, but this is where we catch each other. So I'm going to set these two equations equal to each other. And I get v naught for my friend times time. plus 1 half a for my friend, t squared, is 1 half a for me, t squared. I divide both sides by t, but I realize that once again here, there's something I don't know. I don't know the, the acceleration of the friend, so I'm going to use another kinematic equation. I'm going to use that the final velocity for my friend is their initial velocity, plus their acceleration times time. So I can write down the acceleration of my friend is equal to v final minus for the friend minus v initial for the friend all over time. And then I'm going to take that and substitute it in with the previous equation. And I get that v naught for my friend plus 1 half now I'll substitute in times time is 1 half times my acceleration. OK. So let's see. There's only one thing I don't know here, and that's time. So I'm going to solve for time. I know that's not what I was asked, but I can solve for something here. So I'm going to you know, take advantage of the opportunity, and I'm going to do it. These times cancel. So I'm left with v naught for my friend plus 1 half the final minus 1 half the initial again is 1 half 
And I'm going to combine like terms, and I get one half v naught for my friend, plus one half v final for my friend is one half a times t. Okay. So I'm going to solve for the time. I guess I'm going to multiply through by 2. And I get that the time is equal to v for my friend plus their initial velocity divided by my acceleration. So that's 2 meters per second plus 3 meters per second divided by 1 meter per second squared, which is 5 seconds. And so now I'm going to use a final kinematic equation, and that kinematic equation is that the final velocity for me is equal to my, my initial velocity plus my acceleration times time. I start from rest, so that's 1 meters per second squared times 5 seconds which is 5 meters per second, and that's the answer. So if I'm going to go back up here then and draw my graph, I'm going to see that the graph here looks something like this, that my friend starts with some velocity and is slowing down. I start with no velocity and I'm speeding up. So my friend's slope is 3 meters per second, and then the slope will be 2 meters per second. I start with a 0 meters per second and then go up to a 5 meters per second. Now, at this point, I looked at this problem and I thought, yeah, that's kind of funny that 5 is equal to 3 plus 2. I wonder if that's always the case. And that's when I had the realization that there's an easier way to do this problem. And that's okay, right? You don't have to always do it the you know quickest way, but had I started instead by using the equation that x final minus x initial, so let's call this my friend, is equal to one half v of my friend plus their initial velocity times t, and I wrote down the same thing for me. Right? These are the, we both start from zero. These are the same times, and these two positions are equal. Well, holy cow, when I set those two equations equal, I just find that the sum of our velocities are equal. Right? So now I feel kind of silly, but that's okay. I got some new insight about this problem. What I found is that the final velocity for my friend plus their initial velocity, and since I start from rest, is in fact my final velocity. Wow. So you can do it in a quicker way. You can do it in a longer way. This graphical piece turned out to be key for me in understanding this problem. However you do this problem, it's actually useful to try multiple things that you're going to do and to get more insight on this problem. So I'll let you have fun with that, and we'll stop there.